Christmas decorations. So it's the weekend after Thanksgiving, which means Christmas decorations. Not looking forward to it. You know, I gotta get to take down the boxes, got to decorate the house, put up the Christmas lights, sort of a process. I have some pizza dough in the house, it's resting. You just gotta get these decorations up. When I'm done, I'm gonna be doing a cacio pepe pizza. The technique's gonna be a little bit different. I haven't done it before. I don't know what it's gonna taste like. If I mess up, I mess up. Uh, and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I'll you know how it tastes. So anyways. Gotta get these decorations up and just gotta get them up. Anyways, all right. done decorating did it all myself I didn't do any of the work but I made it look like I did uh, that was my wife who did all this I just um, I just pretended like I did we still have Christmas pillows coming. Um, we still have Christmas pillows coming so yeah we're done with our Christmas decorations got it out of the way so now I'm gonna go bust out some pizzas give some to our neighbors just cuz I have so many pizza doughs laying around all right so let's go make these pizzas So with Cacio e Pepe, you have to have Pecorino Romano. So I didn't come up with this technique, I saw it online. So one of the most important steps when making the pasta dish Cacio e Pepe is to use the starchy water of the pasta and you're mixing that vigorously with the cheese. So in this case, we don't have starchy pasta water, which is why we're using ice cubes. So the plan here is to have the cheese instantly melt when I put the cheese onto the pizza. So I'm not going to use this grater because the cheese is going to be too coarse. I'm actually going to use this microplane. It makes the cheese extremely fine, very soft, and I think it's going to do the job. So I'm just going to shred, shred, shred. I'm going to add some fresh cracked pepper, a lot of it. And I mean a lot of it. Okay, so when you're rolling out your dough, try to be meticulous here because you're not going to have sauce. You're going to have water. You're going to have ice cubes. So try to be meticulous. Try to make your crust nice and round. Also, don't do like I did. Don't use three cubes. Use an even amount of cubes and place them in a way so that when they melt, they're going to melt relatively even. And as you'll see in my cook, because I didn't do this, the ice cubes did melt evenly, which caused my crust not to rise as I'd like it to. Okay, so you, now you have your pizza dough rolled out, put your ice cubes on the dough, and now we're off to the races. So I'm gonna lower the temperature. I'm gonna take her out. And this is where I add my cheese. Add enough so that you don't see any more water floating around on top of your pizza crust. Pop her back in for a few seconds, literally just a few seconds so your cheese melts. Take her out, add a little bit more cheese and you're done. Okay, so not my best looking pizza. I know I've never cooked pizza with freaking ice cubes on it before. It looks pretty creamy. I'm just gonna touch it. There it looks. I'm gonna finish it off with some olive oil. Then I'm gonna add a little bit more, more cheese. Bottom looks, bottom looks okay. Hopefully it came out good. You look at it, pretty good. Crust underneath.
Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, it's okay. It's it's good. It's very cheesy. It's crispy underneath, gooey in the middle. I don't know. Delicious. It melted really well. So if I were you, I would definitely use a microplane if you can, just so that it allows the cheese to melt easily. But yeah, that was my first pizza cooking with ice cubes. If you guys enjoy this video, if it helped at all, you know what to do. Please subscribe, comment, like down below. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Hope to see you guys soon and hope you guys enjoy your holidays. Bye.